The Falaise Pocket or Battle of the Falaise Pocket was the decisive engagement of the Battle of Normandy in the Second World War. A pocket was formed around Falaise, Calvados, in which the German Army Group B, with the 7th Army and the 5th Panzer Army were encircled by the Western Allies. The battle is also referred to as the Battle of the Falaise Gap, after the corridor which the Germans sought to maintain to allow their escape and is sometimes referred to as the Chambois Pocket. The Falaise Chambois Pocket, the Argentine Falaise Pocket or the Trun Chambois Gap. The battle resulted in the destruction of most of Army Group B west of the Seine River, which opened the way to Paris and the German border for the Allied armies. Following Operation Cobra, the American breakout from the Normandy beachhead, rapid advances were made to the south and southeast by the 3rd U.S. Army under the command of General George Patton. Despite lacking the resources to defeat the U.S., breakthrough and simultaneous British and Canadian offensives south of Quarmont and Con, Field Marshal Gunther von Kludge, the commander of Army Group B, was not permitted by Adolf Hitler to withdraw but was ordered to conduct a counter-offensive at Mortain against the U.S. Breakthrough. Four depleted panzer divisions were not enough to defeat the 1st U.S. Army. Operation Lutich was a disaster, which drove the Germans deeper into the Allied envelopment. On 8 August, the Allied ground forces commander, General Bernard Montgomery, ordered the Allied armies to converge on the Falaise Chambois area to envelop Army Group B, the 1st U.S. Army forming the Southern Arm, the British Second Army the base and the 1st Canadian Army the Northern Arm of the Encirclement. The Germans began to withdraw on 17 August and on 19 August, the Allies linked up in Chambois. Gaps were forced in the Allied lines by German counter-attacks, the biggest being a corridor force past the 1st Polish Armoured Division on Hill 262, a commanding position at the mouth of the pocket. By the evening of 21 August, the pocket had been sealed with C. 50,000 Germans trapped inside. Many Germans escaped but losses in men and equipment were huge. Two days later the Allied liberation of Paris was completed and on 30 August, the remnants of Army Group B retreated across the Seine, which ended Operation Overlord. Background Operation Overlord Early Allied objectives in the wake of the D-Day invasion of German-occupied France included the deep water port of Cherbourg and the area surrounding the town of Caen. Allied attacks rapidly to expand the bridgehead had defeated the initial German attempts to destroy the invasion force but bad weather in the English Channel delayed the Allied build-up of supplies and reinforcements, while enabling the Germans to move troops and supplies with less interference from the Allied air forces. Cherbourg was not captured by the 7 U.S. Corps until 27 June and the German defense of Conn lasted until 20 July, when the southern districts were taken by the British and Canadians in Operation Goodwood and Operation Atlantic. General Bernard Montgomery, the Allied ground forces commander, had planned a strategy of attracting German forces to the east end of the bridgehead against the British and Canadian Second Army, while the 1st U.S. Army advanced down the west side of the Catentan Peninsula to Avranches. On 25 July the 1st U.S. Army Commander, Lieutenant General Omar Bradley began Operation Cobra. The 1st U.S. Army broke through the German defences near St. Lowen by the end of the third day had advanced 15 miles south of its start line at several points. On 30 July, Avranches was captured and within 24 hours the 8 U.S. Corps of the 3rd U.S. Army crossed the bridge at Pontobo into Brittany and continued south and west through open country, almost without opposition. Operation Lutich The U.S. advance was swift and by 8 August, Le Mans, the former headquarters of the German 7th Army, had been captured. After Operation Cobra, Operation Blue Coat and Operation Spring, the German army in Normandy was so reduced that only a few SS fanatics still entertained hopes of avoiding defeat. 
On the Eastern Front, Operation Bagration had begun against Army Group Center which left no possibility of reinforcement of the Western Front. Adolf Hitler sent a directive to General Feldmarschall Gunther von Kludge, the replacement commander of Army Group B after the sacking of Rundstedt ordering an immediate counter-attack between Mortain and Avranches to annihilate the enemy and make contact with the west coast of the Cotentin Peninsula. Eight of the nine panzer divisions in Normandy were to be used in the attack, but only four could be made ready in time. The German commanders protested that their forces were incapable of an offensive but the warnings were ignored in Operation Luttich commenced on 7 August around Mortain. The first attacks were made by the 2nd Panzer Division, 1st SS Division Liebstandarter SS Adolf Hitler and the 2nd SS Panzer Division Das Reich but they had only 75 Panzer IVs, 70 Panthers and 32 self-propelled guns. The Allies were forewarned by ultra signals intercepts and although the offensive continued until 13 August the threat of Operation Luttich had been ended within 24 hours. Operation Luttich had led to the most powerful remaining German units being defeated at the west end of the Cotentin Peninsula by the 1st U.S. Army in the Normandy front on the verge of collapse. Bradley said this is an opportunity that comes to a commander not more than once in a century. We're about to destroy an entire hostile army and go all the way from here to the German border. Operation Totalize The first Canadian army was ordered to capture high ground north of Falaise to trap Army Group B. The Canadians planned Operation Totalize, with attacks by strategic bombers in a novel night attack using kangaroo armored personnel carriers. Operation Totalize began on the night of 7-8 August, the leading infantry rode on the kangaroos, guided by electronic aids and illuminants. Against the 12th SS Panzer Division Hitler Jagend, which held a 14 km front, supported by the 101st SS Heavy Panzer Battalion and remnants of the 89th Infantry Division. Verriers Ridge and Quinto were captured on 9 August but the speed of the advance was slowed by German resistance and some poor Canadian unit leadership, which led to many casualties in the 4th Canadian Armoured Division and 1st Polish Armoured Division. By 10 August, Anglo-Canadian forces had reached Hill 195, north of Falaise. The following day, Simmons relieved the armoured divisions with infantry divisions, ending the offensive. Prelude. Allied plan still expecting Von Kludge to withdraw his forces from the tightening Allied noose. Montgomery had for some time been planning a long envelopment by which the British and Canadians would pivot left from Falaise toward the River Seine while the U.S. Third Army blocked the escape route between the Seine and Loire rivers, trapping all surviving German forces in western France. In a telephone conversation on 8 August, the Supreme Allied Commander General Dwight D. Eisenhower recommended an American proposal for a shorter envelopment at Argentin. Montgomery and Patton had misgivings. If the Allies did not take Argentin, Alonso and Falaise quickly, many Germans might escape. Believing he could always fall back on the original plan if necessary, Montgomery accepted the wishes of Bradley as the man on the spot, and the proposal was adopted. Battle Operation Tractable The Third Army advance from the south made good progress on 12 August. Alonson was captured and von Kludge was forced to commit troops he had been gathering for a counter-attack. Next day, the 5th U.S. Armored Division of 15 U.S. Corps advanced 35 miles and reached positions overlooking Argentin. On 13 August, Bradley overruled orders by Patton for a further push northwards towards Falaise by the 5th U.S. Armored Division. Bradley ordered the 15 U.S. Corps to concentrate for operations in another direction. The U.S. troops near Argentin were ordered to withdraw, which ended the Pinso movement by 15 U.S. Corps. Patton objected but complied, which left an exit for the German forces in the Falaise pocket. 
with the Americans on the southern flank halted and then engaged with Panzer Group Aberbach and with the British pressing in from the northwest. The 1st Canadian Army, which included the Polish 1st Armoured Division, was ordered to close the trap. After a limited attack by the 2nd Canadian Infantry Division down the Lays Valley on 12-13 August, most of the time since total eyes had been spent preparing for Operation Tractable a set-piece attack on Falaise. The operation commenced on 14 August at 11.42, covered by an artillery smoke screen that mimicked the night attack of Operation Total Eyes. The 4th Canadian Armoured Division and the 1st Polish Armoured Division crossed the Lays on, but delays at the Dives River gave time for the Tiger. Tanks of the Schwer SS Panzer Abtelung 102 to counter-attack. Navigating through the smoke slowed progress and the mistaken use by the 1st Canadian Army of yellow smoke to identify their positions, when the strategic bombers used yellow to mark targets, led to some bombing of the Canadians and slower progress than planned. On 15 August, the 2nd Canadian Infantry Division, 3rd Canadian Infantry Division and the 2nd Canadian Brigade continued the offensive but progress remained slow. The 4th Armoured Division captured Solange against determined German resistance and several German counter-attacks, which prevented a breakthrough to Troon. Next day, the 2nd Canadian Infantry Division entered Falaise against minor opposition from Waffen SS units and scattered pockets of German infantry and by the 17th of August had secured the town at midday on the 16th of August von Kludge had refused an order from Hitler for another counter-attack and in the afternoon Hitler agreed to a withdrawal but became suspicious that von Kludge intended to surrender to the Allies late on the 17th of August Hitler sacked von Kludge and recalled him to Germany. Von Kludge then either committed suicide or was killed by Jürgen Stroop, an SS officer, for his involvement in the bomb plot of 20 July. Von Kludge was succeeded by Feldmarschall Walter Model, whose first act was to order the immediate retreat of the 7th Army and 5th Panzer Army, while the 2nd SS Panzer Corps with the remnants of four Panzer divisions held the north face of the escape route against the British and Canadians and the 47th Panzer Corps with what was left of two Panzer divisions, held the southern face against the 3rd U.S. Army encirclement by the 17th of August the encirclement was incomplete. The 1st Polish Armoured Division, part of the 1st Canadian Army, was divided into three battle groups and ordered to make a wide sweep to the southeast to meet American troops at Chambois. Troon fell to the 4th Canadian Armoured Division on 18 August, having captured Champo on 19 August. The Polish battle groups converged on Chambois and with reinforcements from the 4th Canadian Armoured Division. The Poles secured the town and linked up with the U.S. 90th and French 2nd Armoured Divisions by evening. An armoured column of the 2nd Panzer Division broke through the Canadians in St. Lambert, took half the village and kept a road open for six hours until nightfall. Many Germans escaped and small parties and made their way through to the dives during the night. Having taken Chambois, two of the Polish battle groups drove northeast and established themselves on part of Hill 262, spending the night of 19 August digging in. The following morning, model ordered elements of the 2nd SS Panzer Division and 9th SS Panzer Division to attack from outside the pocket towards the Polish positions. Around midday, several units of the 10th SS Panzer Division, 12th SS Panzer Division and 116th Panzer Division managed to break through the Polish lines and open a corridor, while the 9th SS Panzer Division prevented the Canadians from intervening. By mid-afternoon, about 10,000 German troops had passed out of the pocket. The Poles held on to Hill 262 and were able from their vantage point to direct artillery fire onto the retreating Germans. 
How so the 7th Army commander ordered that the Polish positions be eliminated. The remnants of the 352nd Infantry Division and several battle groups from the 2nd SS Panzer Division inflicted many casualties on the 8th and 9th battalions of the Polish division but the assault was eventually repulsed at the cost of nearly all of their ammunition and the Poles watched as the remnants of the 47th Panzer Corps escaped. German attacks resumed the next morning but the Poles retained their foothold on the ridge. At about 1100, a final attempt on the positions of the 9th Battalion was launched by nearby SS troops, which was defeated at close quarters. Soon after midday, the Canadian Grenadier Guards reached Montormel and by late afternoon, the remainder of the 2nd and 9th SS Panzer Divisions had begun their retreat to the Seine. The Polish casualties at Montormel were 351 killed and wounded, with 11 tanks lost. For the Falaise Pocket Operation, the 1st Polish Armoured Division listed 1,441 casualties including 466 killed. German losses in their assaults on the ridge were c. 500 dead and 1,000 men taken prisoner, most from the 12th SS Panzer Division. Scores of Tiger, Panther and Panzer V tanks were destroyed, along with many artillery pieces. By the evening of 21 August, tanks of the 4th Canadian Armoured Division had linked with Polish forces at Kudhard and the 3rd and 4th Canadian Infantry Divisions had secured St. Lambert and the Northern Passage to Chambois, the Falaise pocket had been sealed. Approximately 20 minus 50,000 German troops minus heavy equipment escaped through the gap and were reorganized and rearmed in time to slow the Allied advance into the Netherlands and Germany.